Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and it's Sunday so you know what that means it's time for my weekly news roundup for week 27. Now before we begin, to my American audience, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. It is one of my favorite holidays. I hope you are out there barbecuing, going to parades, watching fireworks. It is always such a fun day to celebrate this country's independence. Now that we've talked about that, let's jump right into this. Starting off with some Swords of Legends, which is right around the corner. Swords of Legends Online hosting Reddit AMA ahead of next week's launch. Yes, this game is officially dropping next week. It is coming on July 9th. Now, this is what they have officially dropped. Members of the solo team from the developers and publishers GameForge will be on hand to answer your questions. Use the opportunity to find out everything you ever wanted to know about Swords of Legends Online firsthand. Now, there's something else they're going to be able to do. You could actually do it right now. Listen to this. In addition to the AMA, Solo is giving players a heads up on how to get ready for the release, specifically in regards to your character name. Doesn't it drive you nuts when you start a new game, but you can't use the character name you want? So it's already been taken a hundred times. Players who pre-ordered can actually start today by choosing the name in-game by accessing the character creator early. While this won't get you the ability to hop into Swords of Legends Online proper, just yet, you will be able to ensure that when you do, you'll not be stuck with your B-string name decision. Are you planning on playing this game? The time is now. Moving over to a game that used to be spotlighted on my channel every single week, BG3. Here's how to prepare for Baldur Gate 3's Patch 5, which is coming next week, which is supposed to be a monstrous patch. Patch 5 for Baldur's Gate 3 is set to arrive next week. However, your current Patch 4 saves will not be compatible with it. It sucks, but everybody knows that that's how it goes, as was the case with the previous patches, but Larian Studios has provided some information as to how you can prepare. Now you can continue playing patch four. There's some things you can do in here, and I will link this in the description below. But here's what's coming up next week. Circling back to the present, there's another panel from hell planned to show off these patch five updates, which I will be covering next week. That panel is set for July 8th at 11 a.m. PDT, which you can watch on their official Twitch channel. This follows the first panel from hell earlier this year. It's normally a whole lot of fun. They do little skits and stuff like that. July 8th, new panel. I will be covering it on my channel. Now, unfortunately, you don't see too many game companies that are patriotic anymore. But of course, I did find one. Celebrate Independence Day in GTA Online. Go figure. When you actually go over to their website, they got a whole bunch of information. Look at that monster truck. Celebrate Independence Day in GTA Online. Earn triple for flying high in stockpile, bonuses from finding treasure chests and hidden caches, plus half off patriotic goodies of all sorts. Yeah, they're giving you a discount. What do we got? Oh, you got the motorcycle, treasure chest, collectibles, a little submarine, mobile operations missions, three times the rewards. Got some nice free items and apparel. What is it? You got your, <laughs> you got the beer cap. You gotta have that. And you got what the race the the hot ring saber right here look at this car very patriotic i give you kudos for that enough of me talking let me show you an in-game cinematic for a new character that just officially dropped for black desert online the corsair class sails into mmo today releasing across pc and console versions it's a solid three minute video just kind of shows off some of the quirky things with the class if you want to skip it, go ahead and go down to the description and click on the next segment. If not, enjoy. It's time. This treasure's ours, Scallywags. I finally unlocked the secrets of me father's treasure map. Now for the first one. All of you, on the stones, now. An easy task, right? Now, on to the second one. So good. It's to die for? Now the map says, slowly press that together. The... Oh, so that's what it meant. <laughs> this is the last one. You better be ready. The key be buried in the head of this canyon's master. 
there's no need to worry. Before I'm at your side, me parties! <laughs> well, find his keepers. <laughs> Finally, the treasure be right before us. Now, let's see what it was exactly that me father treasured so. I can almost see the look of surprise on me dear father's face. It took them a while, but Blizzard finally did it. They dropped something for Diablo 4 that actually impressed me. And I made an entire video on it. It's almost like over 15 minutes long. And I will link that at the end of this video if you want to check it out. Diablo 4 character creator looks legit. And it, it looks very legit. From an art and visual standpoint, it might be the best I've ever seen. Now, obviously, how does that translate into in-game? I don't know. What does that do for performance and frame rates and system requirements? I don't know. But the preliminary images of what they are going for, for their character, using lighting and using realism, it's pretty unbelievable. I always say, like, I'm pretty critical on Blizzard and a lot of people don't like that, but I gotta call it like I see it. And in this instance, they absolutely killed it. Check out that video at the end of this video if you aren't up to date on D4, it'll help catch you up. Moving over to a game that I want to start discussing more on my channel, an MMO that has huge hype behind it, a game that people are claiming will be the game of the decade. Time will tell. Ashes of Creation livestream discusses design, studio update, and Q&A, and this was actually posted on July 29th. Now, this main Q&A, a lot of it was focused around Siege and what Siege is going to be like in this game. I am going to link the actual live stream transcript in the description below if you want to go read it for yourself. Lots of good information about this game if you are planning on playing Ashes of Creation. But I wanted to just read one of their answers. And this question was, how are they going to ensure balance on both Siege sides? Okay, Siege, one team versus another. How are they going to balance it? Interesting question. Do we as developers want to ensure that? Not necessarily. Obviously, we want to ensure attacker buffs, defender mechanics, stages leading up to the siege are all balanced, assuming equal footing on both sides. However, if one team is more coordinated or more geared or higher in numbers compared to the other team, those things will not inter that those things we will not interfere with, which they shouldn't. If one team's more prepared, then they should go in with the advantage. But aspects such as castle gate hit points values will we will balance appropriately. The player aspect of things we will leave up to the players to coordinate. The servers will keep track of guild's performance and their win-slash-loss ratio. 
all records of major server events will be kept. If you've been following this game, like I said a second ago, it has huge hype. But what they are claiming about the game, if it all comes to fruition, it might be the game of the decade. I have absolutely no idea, but I can tell you I plan on playing this one for sure. Ashes of Creation Alpha 1 was delayed out of June and officially starts July 14th. I'm sure you saw it coming, but if we're talking about this week's news, we have to talk about Magic Legends shutting down, and now it's reported that layoffs has hit Cryptic Studios, 44 people laid off. Now, I want to be as clear as humanly possible. I was very critical of Magic Legends, I continue to be critical of this game, I made a full review on it. Do we like seeing games fail? No. Do we like seeing layoffs? Absolutely not. Like, very sad situation for the people that poured their heart into this game. So check this out. Music and sound design. Devastating news to share. Cryptic Studios has decided to cancel Magic Legends for poor financial performance, which sadly means I am without a job. They laid off 44 employees this morning. Please forward any sound designer opportunities. Follow-up tweet. I do have to say, Cryptic handled it very professionally and caringly as much as possible anyway. Our CEO was extremely emotional and choked up. Now you remember a second ago, because there might be some light at the end of the tunnel, let's hope. I talked about Ashes of Creation. It's supposed to be one of the biggest games coming out. They tweeted. The Intrepid team is sending out love to those impacted by the layoffs at Cryptic Studios. We are currently hiring for a wide variety of positions. Shoot us an email with your resume to jobs at intrepidstudios.com so who knows one door shuts maybe another one will open last but not least it appears we're not done with new world on my weekly news roundups they continue to drop new content for us to cover new world shows off housing in amazon's mmo through new video series and they try to make it kind of comical I mean, it's mildly entertaining. You might like it, but it is five minutes long. And of course, I'm going to allow this video to take out this video. I hope you all have a great 4th of July to all my American audience out there. But before we leave, if you have not joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. We're now over a thousand members, great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that could jump from game to game together so you never start the server alone. Link for that Discord is in the description. I hope you all enjoyed this weekly news roundup. Have a great weekend and enjoy New World Housing. This week on Settling Down, we join newlyweds James and Elena Whittle on their quest to find the perfect home to start their next adventure, raising a family. James is a retired adventurer who is looking for a peaceful home life and to spend lazy days fishing. Elena is a soldier for hire, looking for a home that is close to some action. I'm done with the adventuring life, you know? I've seen everything Eternum has to offer. And now I want to put my feet up in front of a fireplace and get some rest. He might just want to wither away with the rest of the lost out there, but I'm not ready to hang up my warhammer just yet. I still want to be within a reasonable commute to a corrupted portal or two. The couple have a budget of 15,000 gold, and their realtor has identified three locations that would be perfect for a forever home. First up, house number one in Everfall. For house number one, we have a gorgeous three-story with beautiful stone walls and two fireplaces. And Everfall is a perfect location for a young family like yourselves. It feels a little empty. You say empty room. I say blank canvas. There's a workshop just down the street where you can make anything and everything you need. Wouldn't it be nicer to put your own mark on your new home? Oh, honey, there are some gorgeous trees in the forest for plenty of lumber. We can craft beautiful furniture to fill up the house. Yeah, I can see myself spending sunny days out fishing here. And just look at this view. Uh, is that an enormous shattered obelisk over there? Does it just kind of float frozen like that? Oh yes, the locals even have a name for it. Shattered obelisk. Isn't it beautiful? Ooh, darling. It's absolutely swarming with ancient guardians. We could stroll down on a Sunday morning, bring a picnic, smash their bones into dust for a couple of hours, 
If we're starting a family, I don't know if I'm really comfortable having a little one running around near that thing. Maybe we should check out the next house. House number two is a beautiful home in Weaver's Fed, nestled in the marshland to the east of Aternum. Now I know what you're going to say. It's a bit run down. I prefer to think of it as having character. Sure, it's a little rustic. The swamp mist can creep in if you're not careful, and you probably don't want to stray too far from the firelight at night. But this house is in an up-and-coming area. We have a new governor who has promised lower taxes, and you could really make this home your own. And it has a fireplace that you wanted. I can really see a life for us here. The wind creaking the floorboards, the pitter-patter of tiny feet running back home after being chased by a famine geist. Wait. And this town is so huge. I can do all my crafting around town, do a little business at the trading post, go for a walk to some of the ruins nearby. You're right, but are there any good fishing spots around here? Oh, of course. There are some beautiful ponds to cast your line in, if you don't mind the ancient guardians roaming around. <laughs> right. Was there another property to look at? Last but not least is house number three, located in humble reek water, a haven for expert anglers and adventurers alike. Oh my, what is that smell? I can taste the air. Why, that's the sweet aroma of everything around you decaying. Isn't it something? You know, I could get used to that. Reminds me of my childhood somehow. Now keep that childlike sense of adventure in mind because this is technically a treehouse. Oh wow, I always wanted one of those. I didn't think you'd get this excited, honey. Look at this huge space where a window should be. And it looks like the tavern is only three or four trees over. I don't know. I don't really get a sense of community here. I believe this area is currently under the control of the syndicate, so some smart thinkers like yourselves are sure to find other sharp minds around to connect with. Oh, we've been in the syndicate since we came to Eternum. It's how we met, actually. We were both doing a faction mission. I was cleaving a lost soldier in Twain when... <clears throat> now, I hear Reekwater is best known for its fishing. You heard right. There's rivers, lakes, and the sea to fish in. And the dryads tend to leave you alone if you don't get too close to their parts of the forest. Interesting. I think we need to talk over our options. So, where should this lovely couple settle down? Everfall, Weaver's Fin, or Reekwater? The choice is yours.